Patch 11.20 has arrived, so it's time to update you guys on the three best solo carry champions for each role. If played to their potential, these are the champions our analysts believe will provide you with the greatest ability to impact games on your own. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. And with all that said, let's jump into our three top lane picks. A new champ on the block who makes her way into our top three for 11.20 is Poppy. Poppy is the perfect solo carry pick for the current meta, especially after her buff from 11.19. Laning phase against meta melee tops is very strong as you have consistent harass with Q and passive. A quick Q passive combo with grass proc chunks really hard and is super easy to execute. If you can use this combo whenever the enemy goes for CS, it's free trades. With Darius buffed in 11.20, he's one of the few matchups you've got to watch out for, so banning him is a good idea. Other than that, Poppy can thrive against Camille, Fiora, Aatrox, Riven, and Aurelia, who are all played at extremely high rates. W completely nullifying movement spells allows you to run circles around those picks. For a full out tank build, rush Sunfire into Thornmail second and Randwine's Omen third. If you'd rather a more carry oriented setup, then Divine Sunderer into Sterix and Thornmail fits the bill. Rune Page is Grasp with Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Revitalize, dip into Inspiration for Secondaries, Running Biscuits, and Time Warp Tonic. Fresh off a of buff in 11.20, our second solo carry top this patch is Darius. W cooldown was lowered by 2 seconds, which makes her early game even more oppressive. Those all-in plays where you pop Ghost and chase the enemy down will be extremely deadly, as 2 seconds off a slow with an auto reset accelerates kill potential. Wukong and Riven are two matchups that give most Darius players trouble, so it's a good idea to use your ban on one of those two. This is the most diverse we've seen Darius builds, as you can run Trinity, Stride, or Gore Drinker depending on preference. Gore has really picked up traction as of recent, especially over in EU. Trinity is most popular and the highest damage option. Against ranged picks who rely on kiting, Stridebreaker is still viable to give yourself more sticking power. Conqueror is the best keystone with Triumph, Tenacity, and a Last Stand. Optimal secondaries are Bone Plating and Unflinching. And taking home our final top lane slot for this patch is Set. Hands down the most consistent pick we have seen for any role over the past few months. Set has managed to dodge the nerf bat while many other picks have fallen, which has led to his top lane supremacy. Irelia and Shen nerfed in 11.20 is all the more reason to prioritize Set at an even higher rate. There's a lot to like about Set as he doesn't take a ton of skill to pilot, has insanely strong skirmish power, and can effortlessly pull off 1v2 outplays when ahead. Play for Gore Drinker completion because from then on out, the enemy jungler better think twice before trying to gank. Durability from W Shield and Gore Drinker active allow you to soak so much damage and decimate the enemy in extended fights. In regards to Set's matchups, Riven is one pick the majority of players struggle against, so banning her out is a wise idea. Your core build is Gore Drinker in Hysteric second and Titanic Hydra third. Conqueror followed by Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand are primary runes. For secondaries, pick up Second Wind and Revitalize. With both Amumu and Jarvan losing significant power for 11.20, we have a few changes in the jungle, and the first is moving Talon into the top three. Talon is the definition of a solo carry jungler, as his early game snowball potential is hard to beat. W damage buff to monsters a few patches back is what brought life into the pick, and he hasn't looked back since. The faster clear speed allows you to be more active around the map, which is what Talon wants. Running Ignite provides you with immense dueling power and makes your ganks extremely deadly. Invade plays are also so low risk, as you have the ability to hop over walls and escape when getting collapsed on. This allows you to pressure weak early game junglers better than any other pick. Another massive factor giving Talon strength is his ability to abuse the item combination of Gore Drinker and Ghost Blade. One of these items will surely be nerfed in the coming patches, so take advantage while you can. Keystone is Conqueror, followed by Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Best secondary runes are Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. A common theme surrounding many of the strongest junglers right now is that they can use the most broken items and Kha'Zix is no exception. It's actually quite surprising the amount of Ka players still sleeping on a Ghostblade rush as over 50% of players continue to rush Duskblade. It's mostly the average Ka players though who haven't caught on, as Kha'Zix mains in Masters and above are rushing Yomus the most. Snowballing a lead is as easy as it's ever been, and for an assassin with point and click burst, it's really hard to mess it up. Once you complete Ghostblade, you'll be motoring around the map at lightning speed 
speed to pick off everyone in sight and close games out extremely fast. After completing Ghostblade, go into Prowler's Claw or Duskblade second and Cyrilda's Grudge third. For the maximum amount of one-shot power, grab Electrocute's Keystone, while if you prefer a stronger skirmish, opt for Dark Harvest. Shin Zhao is hung around as one of the more consistent picks despite recent changes, and with nerfs to Amumu and Jarvan, he slots back into the top three. I wonder what Shin has in common with the other three picks we've featured. Oh right, he can abuse one of the most broken items in Gore Drinker. Gore into Steric's combo is a great spike to play for on Shin Zhao as you become an absolute unit in the front line and maintain very respectable damage output too. Early gank power and skirmish are two things that make Shin such an enticing pickup for solo queue. Being able to exert pressure right from the jump allows you to make an immediate impact and push for early advantage. With J4 falling in power, Shin is a great replacement if you enjoy that spam ganky play style. Conqueror is where it's at rune-wise with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand. Round out the page with Free Boots and Cosmic Insight. For our quick question of the day, which champion do you guys think is in need of a buff the most? There are definitely a few good options here, but our pick would have to go towards Renekton. Hate the champ all you want, but you gotta feel for Renek mains, as he was practically gutted due to his pro play presence. So that's our pick, but let us know who you think is most buff worthy down in the comments below. If there's one thing you can count on from Riot, it's that their new champion releases are almost always OP. Vex cracks our top 3 for mid lane in 11.20 as she's performing extremely well in solo queue. Vex passive is really interesting as it counters mobility champions like Silas, LeBlanc, Yone, and Aurelia who are highly contested picks. Being able to fear enemies as they dash in with mobility spells allows Vex to succeed in those matchups. The fact you also deal more damage to enemies after they dash makes it easy to understand why Vex has such a high win rate into picks like LeBlanc and Aurelia. Pick potential and cleanup with ultimate is insanely strong for solo queue as it allows you to take matters into your own hands and force the advantage. The fact it resets on champion takedowns is extremely lethal. Champs with blinks like Cassidy and Katarina are more difficult as Vex doesn't have an escape tool so banning one of them out is ideal. Builds are still being discovered but right now it seems like a Luden's rush into Horizon Focus and Zhonya's is most consistent. Optimal rune page is Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Mana Flow and Transcendence work great for secondaries. It's crazy how a simple cooldown buff can reignite a champion, as that's been the case with Fizz. First, Riot tried nerfing Fizz ultimate and buffing his W, but that went south fast, so they reverted those changes and gave him an E cooldown buff instead. The lower the cooldown on E, the more annoying you are and more impactful your teamfight and survivability is. Fizz E is a spell that can be spammed off cooldown, so taking a whole 2 seconds off at level 9 has seen his power level skyrocket. If you're looking for an answer to Vex, Fizz is actually a really great pick right now. Since Vex lacks mobility, your all in plays at level 6 with ultimate can absolutely annihilate her. Kassadin or Galio are two of Fizz's weaker matchups that you should consider banning out. As more players transition away from the overrated Night Harvester build, it's leading to a rise in Fizz's win rate. The extra magic pen from Ludens combined with his passive proc allows for maximum one-shot power. Build versatility is amazing for Fizz, as you can rush your Zhonya's when against an AD mid or Ludens when snowballing. Pick up Electrocute for the Keystone with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Roll with Triumph and Coup de Grave for secondaries. The third solo carry mid taking home a spot for a few patches in a row now is Uction. What's not to like about the champ if you're looking for a solo queue specialist? Level 2 all in power is surprisingly strong. Picking catch potential with E is a powerful skirmish tool, while stealth from W lets you sneak up on enemies and take them out for free. The fact you've got stealth and a long range gap closer is such a deadly combination. The luxury of being able to choose from a defensive or offensive setup gives you a ton of versatility. Shield Bow and Wit's End allows you to hard counter AP assassin comps, while Kraken Slayer and the Collector gives you an all out snowball option. Press the Attack has amazing synergy with Uction's passive, so it's too good to pass up on. Follow with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. For secondaries, grab Bone Plating and Shield Bash. There wasn't a single direct change to ADC for 11.20, so you can bet Misfortune will remain the number one option. For how simplistic MF's kit is and how strong she is after recent changes, there's no better marksman to climb, especially for the lower ranks. Laning phase with Comet is really obnoxious as you have guaranteed harass. Level 6 potential with lethality items will provide you with a ton of kill pressure from ult. Pair MF with Leona, Thresh, or Amumu, follow up on their CC, and run away with an advantage. 
Ghost Blade and Eclipse are perfect core items as they provide a nice mix of survivability and damage. Cyrilda's Grudge third item will give you immense DPS from ultimate in teamfights. Take Comet as the keystone to enhance your poke with E. Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch round out primary runes. Free Boots and Biscuits are the best secondaries. Another ADC we're really high on for 11.20 is Vayne, as she fits in way too well with the current meta. With Mandate buffed this patch, it will only lead to a higher play rate for enchanters, and picks like Nami, Soraka, and Lulu have already taken the spotlight from more aggro supports like Thresh. The duo win rate of Vayne when paired with a Soraka is completely insane right now, at over 56%. Not only does the support meta complement Vayne, but her build options are second to none. Shield Bow and Wit's End are insane to completely nullify AP champs, while Kraken and Phantom Dancer are great when against tankier comps with less burst. Most Vayne players don't even bother with Kraken these days though, as you have plenty of damage while the extra lifesteal and shield from Shield Bow make you so difficult to take down. For runes, run Press the Attack with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter are your secondaries. And for our third solo carry from the bot lane, we round it out with Jin. Ever since a couple direct buffs along with the fleet footwork changes, Jin is slotted in as a top tier pickup. We were telling you guys about the Ghostblade build two patches ago before anyone had caught on, and now it's seeing a lot more play in 11.20. Jin's highest win rate build at the moment is Ghostblade Rush into Gale Force second and Fire Cannon third, which is no surprise. When you can choose to remove the only major weakness of a champion, it turns them into a monster pick, and that's what Ghostblade and Gale Force do for Jin. With Vayne being picked a ton right now and the matchup being less favorable, allocating your band towards her is a solid plan. For runes, you can take Dark Harvest and Kill Lanes when paired with heavy CC supports and Fleet to sustain more difficult matchups. You won't want to sleep on Nami for 11.20, as the mandate buff will make an already strong champion super broken. Nami was directly buffed a few patches back, which was the initial reason for her spike in play rate, and we expect that to rise even further after this patch. Early laning is extremely strong with Nami, and with ADCs like Lucian and MF picked at very high rates, it's even better. This is one of the major perks you have over other enchanters like Soraka or Sona, as your overall damage output and kill threat in lane is much higher. Once you complete Mandate, 2v2 potential is top notch, as you have lots of extra bursts to give you the edge up in skirmishes. Playmaking ability with ultimate is great, as you can pull the trigger and catch out priority targets when they are mispositioned. After completing Mandate, go towards a Chemtech Putrefire second and Staff of Flowing Water or Ardent Sensor third. Airy is Nami's most consistent keystone with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. For secondaries, Biscuits and Cosmic Insight are the way to go. The second slot for our solo carry supports in 11.20 belongs to Soraka. All it took was one simple change to propel the Banana Flinger into a top tier position. Team fight power with Soraka is godlike right now, with ultimate cleansing grievous wounds. The meta in top and jungle allows Soraka to excel as she's best when paired with bruisers or tanks. The durability of those champs combined with all of Soraka's healing allow your team to win out on extended fights with ease. You're looking at a Moonstone Rush into Redemption second and Warmog's third as the most optimal build. If you can reach this 3 item spike, it's game over. Guardian is outperforming everything else in regards to Soraka's keystone, followed by Font of Life, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. Pick up Biscuits and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. And to conclude, our top three for support as one of the most reliable picks for multiple patches now is Blitzcrank. With Thresh nerfed and dropping down in strength, it's allowed Blitz to take over as the number one hook support. Due to Blitz ultimate providing you with a shield breaker, he's even more valuable for the meta. We are seeing so much Lulu and Yumi along with other enchanters like Soraka and Nami who Blitz can obliterate with a single hook. Win lane and transition your lead around the map with an early mobility boots purchase. Make the enemy juke themselves out by running right up with W, use knock up from E, and then throw hook when it's guaranteed. Focus on vision control around objectives in the mid game and catch enemies out when they face check in. This is where Blitz is at his best. Build is a Locket or Shirelia's Rush into Zeke second and Knight's Vow or Frozen Heart third. Run Guardian as the keystone with Font of Life, Bone Plating and Unflinching. Hex Flash and Biscuits work really well for secondaries. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. 
All right, now that you guys are all set up with the best solo carry picks for each role, good luck at 11.20, have a great day, and we will see you back soon.